What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Praise Podcast. My name is Eric Lade. I get to host this podcast, and yes, you know who the co-host of the Praise Podcast is. It is the Brooke Paninski. We're in the house today. We're in the studio today, ready to just drop another, uh, as the kids would say, fire episode 100, um, bussin' bussin'. Uh, yeah, that is that is some... That is some updated language, Brooke. I don't know. I've been working on becoming more relevant and uh, been watching a lot of uh, language videos. It's really funny that yeah. you said bus and bussin'. <laughs> well, what I've learned, Brooke, is that... Um, bus and bussin's some- more than just bussin'. Right. If something is just bussin', <laughs> it, is, um, it is good. But if it is bussin' bussin', it is, man, big time. Big time good. Great. Wonderful. That's so, great. That's good. <laughs> it's going to be a good day here. I'm on so the excited for podcast. today. Yeah. We are uh we're post Easter, so um yeah. we have the lightness, the 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 weight, the Easter weight off of the shoulders and uh we've gotten to catch up on th- some things this week that have been put off for a while and uh it's been a good it's been a good week uh here uh at Central Christian Church, and uh, yeah, we're excited for a, a weekend coming up, and we're excited because it's Mexican Food Friday. The best day the of the best week. day of the week, which means... <laughs> Other that, than Sunday? Oh, Yeah, well, yeah, 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 we have service on Fridays, yeah, too, that's so true. really, it's good. really, you know, it's good. hey, it's we a... were, you can worship any day, anytime, <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. I'm about to worship through eating a giant bowl of guacamole yeah. loaded with jalapenos. It's so good. That is... Oh. M- that is going to be my worship this That's afternoon. That's bussin', bussin'. <laughs> it is going to be bussin', bussin'. So good. Well, how do you feel like like you brought up Easter? We're on the recovery side of it. Which, let's just mention, Jeremy Redman, who I love, who we both love, we've mm-hmm. talked about earlier on, I guess season, through season one, um, he, his name comes up a lot, but Jeremy texts me on Monday. That and you know nice what he says? Him. He says, hey, BMO, happy Recovery Monday. And he said some other sweet, encouraging things, of course. But Recovery Monday, like that is not something that's talked about enough in ministry. And for people who, um, you know, are the front lines of Easter services across, you know, Mm -hmm. the globe. (laughs) But wow. It is just a, yeah, it is a reality of the job. Yeah. That honestly, unless you're in it, nobody gets it. No. And I don't mean that rudely or like people are not intelligent or that people don't work difficult jobs outside mm-hmm. of ministry. Mm-hmm. But unless you're in, unless you're just in it mm-hmm. or you have a, like a family member mm-hmm. that's been in it, yeah. you just, you just don't get it. And that's okay. Yeah. But it's a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah. And I mean, recovery Monday yeah. also like felt like recovery Tuesday yeah. and recovery <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Here we still are. I feel like I'm still recovering somehow, but yeah, here we are another weekend, which yeah. wow. Praise God for, I'm excited for this. I see. I know I say that almost every podcast, but I'm excited about this episode because there's so many good things we have to get to, but one of which the main conversation is coming off of Easter. It's a conversation we get to have about the aftermath of Easter. So, for anyways, sure, yeah, keep it is going to be. It's going to be. Yeah, good. it is going to be good. <laughs> you know what else is okay? So, first off, mm-hmm. let's just get to it. We have the best. 100%. Praise Podcast Fam. We sure okay? do. Okay, so when yeah. we say that, like, the Praise Podcast Fam is the best, we mean it. Okay, mm-hmm. so last episode, we got on this crazy topic of bonbons. Mm-hmm. Okay? I've never eaten a bonbon. Had you ever eaten a bonbon? I've never had a bonbon. Okay, but you, I knew what a bonbon kind of, or at least I thought. I you kind did. Of, you at least had an idea I, of what Yeah, it was. I had an idea that it was, like, candy, like chocolate mm-hmm. candy or something. Um, and, but anyways, I wasn't super confident in that, mm-hmm. but that was the idea that I had about a bonbon. In my head, I pictured Swiss cake rolls. I don't know why. I think it's just because <laughs> if I was going to sit on a couch and just That's eat something eat. repetitively, it would yeah. be Swiss cake rolls. Which is the conversation that got us on bonbons last episode. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. anyways. People sitting on their couches eating snacks. Yes. An unknown. We don't know who sent us this. Yeah, which is the worst. I know, I because totally we would love know. to be able, at least based off of my uh, investigation into all the pack- packaging, I could not find out who sent us this. But mm-hmm. somebody sent us like a legitimate like authentic box of bonbons. I mean, these are from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Wow. Like, and if we butchered that, I, I sorry. I'm not from there. So, yes, I very well could have said that wrong. Wow. But, I mean, like, I can't even read the language that's on here because they are that legit. So, 
Because you just know it's not English. I don't know. I, I know that it's, I do know that much. It is not English. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We have not dug into these because we wanted to eat them live. Yeah. So that we could give our live review of a Bon Bon. Yeah. So this is this now is on exciting. the box. It actually says Bon O Bon. Yeah. So I mean, it's Spanish, so I don't really know anything about Spanish. Mm, but like. Either. That is Spanish? You're that I'm confident? I'm pretty sure that. Yeah, I think so. Kay. Yeah, Spanish. So what this says is it is a, it's a, uh, I would call it a round chocolatey. Look, it's, piece. yeah, it says gracias. On ah, the front. yes. Okay. There we go. See? That is Mexican Spanish. food Friday. Yes. Uh, so it's like a. Where did you find that description of it? A peanut cream and wafer filled milk chocolate bonbon. Yeah. That is what we are about to eat. Yeah. Which this is wild though too to hold the suspense of trying this. Goodness. The other day. I really want to eat it. <laughs> the other day we or I got an email from Bambi who's our secretary mm-hmm. essentially. At like she works the front desk or whatever. And so she helps us organize like packages and mail that comes in blah blah blah. I you, you know, if you get a package, you get an email. Well, I got an email from Bambi and she's like, "Hey, you have a package." And um I was expecting a delivery of something. Um so I went down just thinking it was one thing, and then she um, gives me this box, and I'm like, well, this was, like, from FedEx or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't order anything. Um, and I was like, huh. So I just grab it, and I go back to my office, and um, I'm about to open it, but then, like, on the front of it, it says Brooke and Eric. Like, it's addressed to both of us. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, oh, like, maybe Eric ordered something. I don't want to open it if it has his name on it, too, so let me just put it in his office. So put it in his office, um, tell him that it's in there. Um, and then he's like, well, I didn't order anything either. And I'm like, this is crazy. So anyways, he opens it up and it finds the bonbons and I just lost my mind. It was just really like the coolest thing to get. So, like I felt so loved and it just was so cool. But anyways, I've been dying to try these. It's, so, uh, I don't know what exciting. it says about our lives that not only did I open this package of bonbons, <laughs> I was excited enough. My first thought was, I'm not going to just call Brooke. I need to FaceTime Brooke. Yeah, that's And show true. her these bonbons. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Anyways. It's so good. And also, what does it say? That they put my name before your name. That was my favorite part. That is something you pointed out. <laughs> and I was going to let that slide, but yeah, you. it was to Brooke It and was Eric, Brooke but, and Eric, not Eric okay. and Brooke, which I love. I'm going to eat this thing. Okay, you're, here you're we go. You're making okay. me stall, so here we go. I'm so excited. Yeah, it does. This is gracias. Look, you can hear the rapper. I'm going to try to click this close. Ew, so you're people che- can hear the chewing. <laughs> oh, this is wrapped it interesting. How do you say interestingly? It's like not it's twisted on the ends like like a mint would be, but this is like five times the size of a mint and it's like glued. I've already eaten one before you've even gotten yours unwrapped. Yeah. But still, okay. Milk chocolate, lightweight. Mm. It kind of Huh. Okay, here we go. I can hear you chewing now. Mm-hmm. It's crunchy. I'm a big fan. Mm. It's, it's like good. so. My favorite candy, chocolate wise, is a Reese's cup. I this is like Reese's cup and a Kit Kat and a Kit Kat mixed together. Put together. Wow. Which honestly, I would say my second favorite would be a Kit Kat. Yeah. Kit Kats are one of my favorites. All that to say, this is good. Catch me on the couch eating bonbons. bonbons. Okay. No wonder people do bussin', that. Bussin', that bussin', is, bussin', bussin'. That, that is what These a bonbons bon- are bussin', bussin'. Wow. Wow. That is really good. Those to are dangerous. our friend who we assume is from Argentina. Um, or knew that they are who legitimate. Sent these, or yeah. who are from here and knew that Argentina is a place to buy bonbons. And who knows? Yeah. But whoever blessed us wow. with this box. I get a box of bonbons. How many, of them, how many are know. in there? There's a lot more. Wow. Whoever blessed us. You know Truly, gracias. You know what's gracias. interesting? What? So you can have two of these. Uh-huh. That's a serving size. It's There's so two of these. They're 167 calories for two. Mm-hmm. I just I don't think I've ever seen anything that's not like a round number. 167 is the calorie. It's most they're definitely very specific. for real from Argentina. Yeah, they're they're no very way specific. That's from the United States. Somebody's like, no, it's not 170. Mm-hmm. Those are 167. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And wow. it's lightweight. It is. It's like That's fluffy. refreshing. It's like fluffy. It's like not too rich either, but like yep. 
Very about good. midnight and a glass of milk and wow. that box, and it'd be a throwdown. Throwdown in my household. Okay, so whoever's responsible for blessing us, please email us either Brooke at centralnow.com and or Eric at centralnow.com. We have to know yep. who you are. We have to meet you Those somehow, some way. I'm a bon bon guy. Wow. I, Is that we might the need episode? To, we might need to end the episode. I'm, I'm <laughs> speechless right now. Wow. My mind has been rocked. It has been blown. And mm. I think the fact that this Should is just probably like, get out more. Just wow. No, just, yeah. This is great. Good wow. stuff. Good stuff. I need water. I just have coffee. Yeah. Well. To drink, but wow. If you Thank hear you. me chewing something the rest of this <laughs> episode, hear, I've if eaten. If you hear this <laughs> yeah. in the microphone. Yeah. I've eaten another one. He's, I'm he's working on eating another one. Long. Yeah. <laughs> All wow. right, well, that was so a f- cool. That was great. That was good. That was a good appetizer to Mexican Food Friday, for sure. And I yeah. will probably have one after Mexican Food Friday. It just feels like you it's just a must. put one in your pocket? I will. Uh, it'll melt. But, yeah. but they are, like, a decent size, too. Like yeah, that was not small. Like. You turned yours into multiple bites. <laughs> yeah, and I still felt like my mouth was full. I went. Just, you put the whole thing. I put the whole thing <laughs> in my mouth, which, speak, when we were in Brazil one time playing music, okay, we went to Brazil, mm-hmm. and. Of course, you know, this was this was pre like weight loss John or even weight loss me anybody. Okay. So they just assumed everywhere we went that we were like the fat Americans, you know what I mean? And they would they gave us like this little candy mm-hmm. one time. And I thought it was like, you know, you go to Olive Garden, they give you an Andy's mint or something. You know, it's just that yeah. little tiny. So I'm like, oh, it's like a mint. Which or other something. than the breadsticks, that's the best part right. of Olive Garden. But so continue. I I mean, all of us, just not even knowing, you know, Mm -hmm. like I just take this piece of candy and pop it in my mouth. You know, it's like a little, it's like maybe the size of an Andy's mint or like Mm -hmm. one. Is it chocolate? Yeah. If you break off like a piece of a Hershey's bar, you know, like that size, not very big. So I pop it in my mouth one bite. I look over and all the Brazilian people were with eating. I mean, they were turning this thing into like a four bite. I mean, just (laughs) the tiny little thing. I was like, oh, here we go. Yep. The fat American just just (laughs) chucked it in his mouth. Ate it. I was like, "Oh, this was a nice little, well, nice little appetizer." But anyways. that's so funny, oh Brooke. You know, no, but I'm so serious. Yeah. If you sent these email us, yeah, I, I would, have to know. I just have to know. To know. Yeah, we would but love to know. I'll, I'm over. I'm, I'm. We can move on now. But, but man, yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. You should go out and buy a box. Maybe I'll. Uh, we'll try to post a picture of this so everybody Let's can do it. see the, what we're talking about. Yeah, everybody can see what what we're posting. Mm-hmm. But, anyways, yeah. Song Spotlight, Brooke. Got it. What are you listening to? Mine was, hold on, let me get the, let me pull it up so I don't mess up the title. Yep, there we go. It's Plead the Blood. Um, Caden Vaughn, our sweet Caden, he's like our video um, guru here. Um, This was like, I think they had like a clip on it, of it, of this song on Instagram or something. Maybe Cody Carnes had posted it or Brandon Lake or something, but Caden had shared it. Um with us and I just thought oh okay this is good and I just listened to it again let's do it again and I think it has such a balance of um you know like your old hymn but like mm-hmm. it's like kind of like with a flair and so that makes it's like there's a sweet spot for that for me you know memory wise like this that I, I don't know they just did such a good job like uh, kind of meshing the two um together and I think the to me the lyrics are so clear and bold they're just clear and they're bold and I think songs can just lose lose a lot lose me a lot if um you waste a few lines of lyrics you know just because it rhymes or just because it fits or just because it you know works like if you, you can I don't know I can you just can pick that out sometimes and like it that's a waste you know that just drives me crazy I could probably list like three to five songs right now at the top of my mind that come up that I'm like, yeah, you know, that, that irks me every time I hear that song. I like thinking of that line. I'm like, I can think of four other lines that work better, but this is mm-hmm. what you settled for. No, I'm being mean. But anyways, they just, I, I top to bottom. I just think they did a great job. But Plead the Blood, that's probably my, what I've been listening to the most the last two weeks. That is a good one. He sent yeah. it to me. Mm-hmm. I think we were in a group group message. I think he sent it to like ah, our staff message. That is, yes, is that did. like our staff, you know, group? And then, um, like it was that Instagram clip, um, and then I went and downloaded it, and it was just, it was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. What about you? Mine is um, 
So just, you know, my good pal, David Leonard. He uh Is that your hat friend? Yeah, that's my hat friend. Yeah, your hat friend. Uh, no, he released he released a new album called Plans. Mm. And uh, there's a song on there called Every Hour. Mm. And it's just really good. I'm going to look it's it really up right good. now. Yeah, Every Hour. It's him and Josh Baldwin. Uh, but uh, the whole album has a lot of good a lot of good songs on it. Um I don't know, his voice is just so good. And it's like He's kind of like he has a voice that's that's similar, not similar to, but it's it's for me, it's like Chris Stapleton. Like oh, I could yeah. just list, like it really doesn't matter what the song is. Mm-hmm. Like I could just listen to him sing, and it's like you know whether you're mowing, whether you're doing this album is kind of like that. Like you can just turn this album on, and it's just a good album, good lyrics every hour. Check it out, David Leonard new new album plans. Didn't even get paid to say all that. <laughs> David, if you're listening. David, hit me up with another hat. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I added it to my playlist. It's good. Now. I think you'll so, like it. Good. We Sweet. can listen to it on the way to Mexican Food Friday. Say less. We'll do it. All right, Brooke. Do you want to intro what we're talking about? Or do you... So uh, I'll set it up. Okay. And then you can take it from there. So um, on Tuesdays here at Central Christian Church, Mount Vernon, Illinois, 301 North 10th Street, Mount Vernon, Illinois, centralnow.com. Check it out if you're not um, connected. So uh, on Tuesdays, we have uh, what we call staff prayer time. Uh, We do this thing called coffee break every day, 1030 for like 1030, 1045. We all just as a staff, we come out of our holes and we uh, just hang out together, drink coffee, catch up, whatever, because we are all in different departments. We don't always see each other. All the time. So it's just time for us to hang out. And then on Tuesdays, we end that time with a prayer time. We'll pray for prayer requests that maybe, you know, we've gotten through prayer cards or just things that we know from volunteers or whatever it may be. We have a time of prayer. And then somebody on our staff will lead us kind of through a short devotion uh, as well, either before or after we do that. And this past weekend, Amber Crawford, uh, she's our K-2 through director, works with our kids Super cool person, married to Lucas Crawford, listens to this podcast. Shout out to Lucas. What's up? What's up, Luke? And then, um, so she led us through um, just a a, a reminder, uh, really kind of like what it was like post-resurrection, you know, like kind of really specifically time, which we're going to talk about the idea of like go and make disciples. Mm-hmm. But then was also just talking about, um, you know, the the excitement around that as well. Mm -hmm. And so she had asked us, um, you know, as a part of that, like what are some of the wins, some of the things that, um, you know, we want to discuss in our ministry areas from Easter. And um, from that, Randy Sells, who if you know Central at all, you know Randy Sells. Uh, If you don't know Central at all, Randy Sells is like probably, I mean, we're celebrating 107 new years of ministry at Central mm-hmm. this year. Uh, Randy has been here for like 35 of those 170, but like in Central's current shape, form, ministry, all that, like there's probably not a guy that has shaped just the ministry of Central over the past 30, 40 years than Randy sells. Right. So he is like the guy, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, he kind of just, he talked about a lot of different things, which we're going to talk about as well. Um, and we decided, you know what, that conversation was good enough that we want to let you all in on it. And we both were kind of like, we could have talked about this more and longer and we do want to. So take it away, Brooke. Yeah. So Amra was in Mark chapter 16, um, starting at verse 14. And, um, this is the CSB version, which I just think is powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. It says, The Great Commission. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he had risen. Then he said to them, 
Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by accompanying signs. So just, wow, that's power. That's a powerful piece of scripture. My first thought, and I don't know if I want to just jump into it already, but I think I'm just gonna. Um, my first thought was like, I'm not sure that I ever really thought about the Great Commission from that point of view. Like, you hear about the Great Commission. We say a lot, you know, you in, in hear a lot like, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, like, We hear that a lot, but I don't think that I've ever read, heard, understood, thought about it in like that context of like why he said it, where he was when he said it, like all these things like, and there was just something about us coming off of the weekend of Easter and Amra sharing that scripture that that has stuck with me all week. And I just felt this way of the call of like, did you hear me? You know, like I just picture the the Lord just asking the church, did you hear me? What I said and the direction I gave. Um, do you understand? Do you believe? Like, are you willing to be obedient to that extent? And if not, are you willing to learn? Are you willing to question and ask and 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 test me on this? You know, I just feel like sometimes as the Capital C Church, we we miss the entirety of what the Lord has maybe like asked of us to do um, when we're going out and when we're preaching the gospel and when we're sharing, you know, these signs and wonders. And, you know, you think like um, the miracle, the miraculous, like what these people witnessed when they were alive, when Jesus was murdered, he was put into a grave, guarded by stone and men. And then three days later, as he prophetically had spoke before, like that was accomplished, it came to pass, he was dead and then he wasn't dead. He literally came back to life and he was, he was, you know, moved, he was moved out of the grave, like he came out of the grave, he went and saw these people, you know, and things started to click, and words started to get out, and the, and the excitement started to spread, but also with the, when the excitement spread, you know, the thing that also, like, we don't always maybe think about is, like, although the excitement was spreading, like, so was, like, disbelief, and that, again, is something I guess I just never sat down and really thought about, like, I really just thought, oh, if people were there to see it, you know, we talked about Thomas, <laughs> like mm-hmm. we were like, he gets a bad rap, but Thomas was maybe the only one sure that, you know, that we mainly address or, you know, talk about or reflect about when we read scripture of, of him who questioned God. But how many other hundreds of people who were alive when that happened, when that came, when that prophetic word came to pass, they were alive to see it, to witness, to hear it, to whatever, and who still did not believe. And then you think like the way that the Great Commission ends is where we are right now. He ascended and he's sitting at the right hand of God. And it's like, and then from that moment to the next prophetic word, which was he's coming back, that's where we are right now. And so how many people when he does come back will be excited and recognize it and totally aware? And how many people will be, will witness it and will be alive for that to happen and still have disbelief and I just think it's wild that 
he he literally says he had to rebuke the unbelief and the hardness of hearts. I don't know. I could just talk about this for a while. Like, I just think that's layered and profound. And it's, I know I say the word powerful a lot, but it really is so powerful. And there's so much that we right now, today's church can learn just from this one simple passage. Yeah, well, and I was reading through a few of the different accounts and you look at Luke's and his, you know, and it's like even some of that, I don't know that you would call it rebuke, but even there was just so much like the way Luke shares it is like Jesus had to spend some time almost convincing them that, hey, like this is me. And he even says like, didn't like, did I not tell you about mm-hmm. all this? Like, did mm-hmm. I not, you know, like, it's kind of like when you're having that conversation with your husband or your wife, mm-hmm. and you're like, we had this conversation, <laughs> whether you think we did or not, like, we had this conversation, mm-hmm. and I know we did. Mm-hmm. It's like, we talked about all this, so mm-hmm. I don't know why you're acting so surprised and confused <laughs> right yeah. now, because, like, we talked about this. <sighs> but yeah. that's where you, you know, and I think it's interesting in all of the accounts, Mark is the only one that kind of gets into the specifics there mm-hmm. of what the go and make disciples looks like. Like yeah. Matthew is is a little bit more vague yeah. and just kind of the generality yeah. of go, baptize, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And uh and Luke kind of in the same way. Um he he was kind of more on the the side of things on the like focusing on Jesus, emphasizing that I told you all this was going to happen. Like all this has been prophesied and we talked about it mm-hmm. and now it's here. So stay put because Holy Spirit's coming. Mm-hmm. So stick around, stay tuned to be continued. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I don't I think it's interesting that Mark got into as much detail yeah. as he did, like specifically what that looks like mm-hmm. um, because you could say that a lot of those specific things that he got into are not at the forefront of um, what necessarily going and making disciples necessarily looks like today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I also think too, I mean, I'm no Bible scholar, but I just wonder like what it was about Mark and his relationship with Jesus and what he experienced those years he walked in ministry with Jesus, like that, that that was what either like i mean i don't what he saw or fit to share like you mm-hmm. said or like what he heard or what he you know whatever like i wonder what it was like why mark like why was mark the one who um emphasized like that you know like that component of like the authority that we carry and the power of the holy spirit that we carry um, that we, the church, are, like, right now, you know, he, here in the, in the here and the now, like, we're, like, that, I don't know, that we're able to be used by God in that way, that we literally have the authority and the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on people, and they, they're healed, you know, or that we can um, speak to, like, like, the demonic nature and, like, just cast it out you know like that we get by the by the blood like we get to operate that way and it's not something that I know a lot about I mean it's definitely something I've experienced but it's not something I know a lot about um and so I just sit here and I just like wonder like Lord like there's so much that we don't know there's so much that we don't get or that we're getting you know that we're you know you're blessing us because you're good sure but it's like man like teach us show us like if we could go deeper if we could go more if we could just like broaden what we know and understand and experience of you like what would it be like because you know it would be better how you know what I mean like things are great but you know it would be better because it's the Lord's way you know and I just think you know what would that look like you know what would that what would that you know like what would it take for us like to, to practice that, you know, or to like emphasize that, that part of it, you know, of, of saving, of Jesus saving people and the part that we play was spreading the gospel, you know? Yeah. I, it's almost as if he wanted to 
make sure that people understood this was part of it. Yeah. Like so intentional. whether whether like he was for himself, like he mm-hmm. was trying to make note of like this is part of it or is because of what he had experienced. Mm-hmm. And I mean, as we've talked about, I mean, there was clearly unbelief at that time. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of questions and unbelief especially around miracles and healing Mm -hmm. and things like that, Mm -hmm. which obviously they had seen and many other people had seen Jesus do and some of them themselves do. Um, But then, yeah, it's, it's like he, he knew it's like Mark knew it's a problem now Mm -hmm. and people got to see it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Imagine 2000 years from now, Mm. how hard it's going to be. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like the, almost the forethought of, of for whatever reason, Mark knew that, Hey, the church a long time from now is going to need that this reminder Mm -hmm. that this is part of it. Yeah. Wow. I love that. And it's kind of cool because this, it kind of leads into what Randy was saying. Like Randy, um, was just sharing like the, the call, um, for us as a staff here to just continue being excited about the gospel, to be excited about coming to church, to be joyful, to worship and, and joyful to build relationships with people in this building. And, um, because again, like in ministry, like the weekend after Easter, we can be so tired, but the weekend after Easter is like when you, when most churches will see like the most influx of like new people in the building because they had an experience, you know, for possible, because Easter weekend is sometimes the first time people are back in church or in church ever or in a long time. And so it's like a lot of people who possibly enjoyed that or um thought in that moment like I really need to get back in church or I want to come back or whatever like that's the next weekend that's this weekend and that's when we in ministry are the most tired you know and it's like that's when we need to be the most alert and the most excited the most joyful so Randy was kind of calling us out and like challenging us with that and to be like on guard and ready um just to pour out and um but anyways he kind of was saying like just think like the church then grew like astronomically because of what they had just experienced with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he, you know, just talking about the growth and expansion of churches across, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah, because why? Like, because they were excited. Like they were excited about what they witnessed or what they heard or what they were choosing to believe that God did. You know, it's like um, just, Wow. And then I'm like, and that's where we are this weekend. You know, like we are still so excited about the re- death and resurrection of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think that was well, that's, sweet too that he mentioned that. I think we don't, we don't, um, like the disciples' reaction after Jesus died. If that doesn't tell you that something happened, that's, you know, that something pretty crazy, pretty wild, something that would be a, beyond any human being's imagination happened, mm-hmm. then I don't know what can. Right. Because here are guys that followed Jesus around for years, some of them, witnessed all kinds of things, then witnessed their teacher and best friend be killed in the most brutal way for what he believed in. And I mean, like to see that and then something in their mind said something happened, like something had to happen because the natural human reaction, if Jesus had not actually risen from the dead, the natural reaction for a human being would be, well, I'm not talking about this anymore. Look what just happened to him. Like, you know, he said all this. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. No way I'm going out there Mm -hmm. getting myself up on a cross. Mm -hmm. Not a chance. But that's not what they did. I mean, they immediately, I mean, Mark says, and and the disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked worked through them. Mm -hmm. Something happened. Some, they... They witnessed, they saw, they lived something that not only made them not fearful, it energized them and excited them to the point 
where they were doing things that they had never done before. Yeah, like they that were, zeal was just... They were teaching wow. in ways that they never had before. They mm. were going places that they never had before. You bring Paul in now to the story, a guy who is now living a life that never had before. And so there was a different kind of energy and a different kind mm-hmm. of like urgency mm-hmm. and excitement and I think reality and uh, I'm blanking on the word like legitimacy mm-hmm. to what Jesus had taught them. And we see that by what they did after his death, because if he would have stayed in that grave, you got to imagine they go back to their normal lives. Yeah. Nobody talks about it anymore. Right. But they felt it was exciting enough. It was big enough. It was life altering enough. enough. Yeah. Yeah. It was real enough Mm -hmm. that they continued on and then they then put the target on their back. Mm -hmm. And it was important enough that they kept preaching. It was important enough that they started writing it all down and recounting it. I mean, so I don't know. That's like their reaction to me. Like that ought to be, even though, you know, 2000 some odd years later, like that, that's got to be us. Like we have to have that same energy, that same reaction. Like we should. We should want to go out and tell everybody about it because that's how big of the news it is. And why wouldn't you share it? If you knew something like this and if you witnessed something like this, why wouldn't you be the most excited to talk about it? Yeah, and I was even thinking, too, of, like, um, when you're when you're talking about, like, they the disciples felt such an urgency to go and to preach and then you think to what extent like not only did they just continue and not only did they just have the endurance but like when you go and you look at like how they died and why they died I think that's just like I think that emphasizes even more the point of what you were saying like they were some of them were martyred they they, they were like they preached in places against things that weren't of God and, like, were killed for it, you know? And I just think, man, then it must have been so real because you don't just, like, die for something you don't believe in and you don't just die for something that's not real, you know? And I think the the Bible is so powerful, and right now it keeps coming up of, like, you know, we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. You know, Revelation talks about this and John brought it up during Easter services and it's like, but that's it. And there's something about when you experience God, like you've experienced something so real that like you, there is a boldness that just is birthed in you that like you just don't care what comes like the aftermath of sharing what you experienced or what God had done. And these people, these men experienced it to the point that they were going to share about it and share about it and share about it, that they didn't care if it cost them their life. They didn't care. And I just think that that's admirable. And you're so right. Just It emphasizes just what they experienced and how real all that was. Um, and then what does that say for us? You know, we're so far removed, it feels like, from that moment in time. We're 2,000 years removed from that. And the only thing that we can possibly read to place us in that time and and during that event is obviously the Bible. That's it. That's all we have. That's the only linking piece to what that time was like. And if we don't dig into the scripture to really understand that, then our emotions and our mind, like we can't feel that like burning like desire that they had unless we really are in the word and we can you know by the power of the holy spirit he reveals things to us that you know we didn't see before and it just like you know you talk about it energizes us in a way we hadn't experienced before you know all this stuff it's like you know uh, uh, and they were just there they got to actually see it you know and it's just uh, i don't know i could keep talking about it but Mm -hmm. for the sake of getting on another tangent (laughs) i won't (laughs) But it's cool. That's yeah. good stuff. But it's it's uh it's 
such a reminder of how unenergized mm-hmm. we can be at times. Right. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. it's just the all the opportunities that we miss just because we're going through the motions. Whatever. Yeah. You yeah. know. Right. And I don't know. You you think about what those guys did, mm-hmm. and it makes what we do look so small and, yeah. and not insignificant, but it's just like, you know, mm-hmm. there's so much more to give. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to, to go after. And for whatever reason, so far, like just the, tr- the global church as a whole hasn't quite reached that real urgency point yet. I don't think mm. to where, cause we don't know the day or time. And, and honestly, probably in their minds, they thought, man, he's coming back in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, so like we rate. got, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, we don't have much time. Like yeah. we got to, you know, he's, it's, it's going to be a month or two, you mm-hmm. know, maybe like we, we got to get going. And so, you know, it's like, why don't we operate in that same way? I mean, it could be a couple of weeks. We don't know. Yeah. You know? And so, it's uh it's such a reminder of it's worth getting up early and getting in your bible mm-hmm. it's worth missing something that you feel like is important or significant because the world says it is so that you can be in church with other people it's worth being tired and getting together with a group of friends to talk about the bible it's worth going, you know, a step out of your comfort zone to give God praise that he deserves. Like, it's it's worth that. Mm-hmm. What do we have to do to get that? Like, to understand what it's worth. Yeah. That's a good question. I think that's a good thing for people to, re- to reflect on and to hold yourself accountable um, for, of just, like, you know like I've had seasons of just like where I have felt like my ear is so in tune you know like it like I feel like the Holy Spirit is just like busy you know and like I'll have eyes to see certain things or I don't know like it just seems a little bit more busy on like the spiritual side of things like you just feel like um like I said just so in tune and then there are other times in my life where I'm just like bored (laughs) you know what I mean because I'm not in a good head space or I've not been disciplined in study and I've not had been pouring in what I need to have been poured in to be able to pour out, you know, things that, you know, whatever in a way that I should be or whatever. But like, you know, that's a lot of that is on us and like what we choose to do or not do. And, um, it's funny because like, as soon as I have, um, as soon as I have just, you know, like you hear a word or like you get eyes to see something like the excitement that stirs in my spirit of like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know, like it just like, I never get tired of it. But then, you know, I'm human. And so then, you know, just a few weeks go by and a sleepy baby and, you know, busyness of schedules and Matt's soccer things, you know, like all the things of a mom and whatever it's like. And then the busyness and of the world distracts you from the work of God, even on like a spiritual side of it. Not just that, oh, I work in full-time ministry. Like it's even the spiritual work that he asks us to take part in that we just miss because we're not paying attention, you know, like we're paying more attention to things in the world and, uh, you know, not that they're not important or whatever, but it's not the most important. And then when we stop, when we stop making like, you know, spending time with God, the most important thing, then it's like we hear from him a lot less. It's not because he's gone anywhere. Like, you know, that's one of the people or one of the things a lot of people will say, like, oh, he's just, you know, whatever. And then you also hear, oh, no, God doesn't go anywhere. You know, that whole spiel. It's like, no, but really, he's so present and he's always busy. He's always doing something. And um, we get to take part in that when we are willing to pay attention to what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Now, anyways, that's just, that's cool. That's that's a good thing. Well, I've been told the best way to know What's important to you and where your heart is. Follow your time. Follow your money. Mm. Those two things mm-hmm. will tell you what's the most important to you. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's good. Thank I like you. That. I didn't. I didn't make it up. <laughs> I wish <Sure>. I had. <laughs> it's not mine. Oh, that's still, that's good.
I like that. Yep. Follow your time, follow your money. Yep. Hmm. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully this will be a weekend that finds you excited to be back in church. Uh, maybe yeah. Easter was the first time you stepped back in the doors in a long time or in a while. Uh, hopefully, uh, the weekend coming up. Um, of course, you'll hear this after that, but hopefully, uh, you you were as excited uh, to be back, and uh, we would be a people and um, you know a church that's actively moving and actively living out what Jesus tasked us with because Jesus wasn't just giving that those those assignments and those tasks to the disciples but uh, it's it's all on us as well so that's a, a good challenge a good charge and um, Jesus is alive and yeah. there is nothing that should get us more excited and get us out of bed quicker than the fact that we know that we're aware of that we've lived it we've seen it and we get the opportunity to share it and so hopefully that is what will be on the forefront of our minds for the next few days brooke yeah it's been a good conversation (laughs) yeah let's end it with another bonbon i'm getting ready to eat another bonbon (laughs) yeah so i was like it feels like during this serious conversation is now now is not the time to open up <laughs> another bonbon. Uh, we're talking about casting out demons and Eric's but, yeah, over but there. I'm like, here. man, I'm yeah, I'm gonna have <laughs> I'm gonna have another bonbon for yeah, sure. So, okay, but bonbon sender. Yes. Please hit us up. We would love to please we would love to be able to us. say thank you yeah, to you. Truly. As always, uh, like, share, follow our podcast. That'll update you when uh, you we drop new episodes. If you go to the Central Net website, you can't like or follow there, but you can always check every other Monday. We've got a new episode there. Um, Share this with somebody. That always helps this podcast and this conversation get seen and heard by more people. And uh, Apparently in more places, too. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go find the Bonobon company, and I'm going to leave a rating and review. There you go. Because that's what people should do. They should leave rating. That's what people should do. If if you like something, you should leave (laughs) a rating and review of it. So other people yeah. know that it's worth checking out so and liking. So if they, I could read Spanish, I would see if <laughs> read yeah. that box and yeah. see if they give instructions. <laughs> I'm sure they do. That's amazing. So I'm gonna eat with this. that being said, <laughs> with that being said, let's be people in every day and every way <laughs> that bring the praise. We'll see you next time.